Hello from Brooklyn and welcome to episode number three. Um, this is a, believe it or not, a knitting podcast. Um, my name is uh, Jimmy and I'm coming to you from Bushwick, New York City. Um, this is Phoebe. Say hello, Phoebe. So if you hear um, if you hear noises in the background, that this might be her. We have a new puppy in the house, so um, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, um, I'll tell you more about her story in in a little bit. But bye, bye. Mwah. Like I was saying, uh, this is a knitting podcast. My name is Jimmy, and welcome and thanks for coming in, uh, spending some time with me. Uh, today is March 1st, 2018, and it's been a while since I last recorded because I didn't have <laughs> much to show you anyway. Um, today I'm going to show you... Uh, a little bit of what I've been working on. I have one finished object, only one. Uh, I am. I, I was uh, telling Rebecca from uh, the Mean Girls, the Mean Girls podcast, um, that I was going to throw Phoebe under the bus and say that because of Phoebe, I haven't had time that much time to knit, so I don't have much to show you. But. Um, Let's see, let's get started. Um, last time, I think I was uh, working on my exploration station that I wanted to use for Vogue Knitting Live, which happened like two months ago. Um, <laughs> so I did finish it for that, and, and I... Uh, went and took some classes and uh, went to a lecture by Stephen West and uh, that was fun so I'll tell you I'll tell you more about it towards the end um, I'm sure you've heard by now plenty of stories from other people so I'm not really sure that I'm going to add anything new but um, it'll be towards the end so um, let's start this is uh, my exploration station that I finished about two months ago <laughs> um, and uh, here it is it's actually pretty massive which I like um, this is a uh, Stephen West pattern um, it's a paid for pattern. I think it was uh, a mystery knit along a couple of years ago, maybe like 2013, 2014. I don't remember. Um, but I didn't, I didn't make it. I made it just this time. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to knit. Um, last time I showed you, I think I only had a couple of these wedges done. Right? So, um, let's see, the way it's constructed, you start, it's a top down shawl, you start in um, the center and go down and you do, the first section is these short row wedges that you create uh, some eyelets as you do the short rows then you move on to the brioche section and you do maybe like 16 rows of brioche then you move on to this lip stitch section and uh, then you do this kind of interesting horizontal ribbing kind of thing going on which interestingly enough you do it all with knit stitches you never purl which is kind of fun 
right and then the chevron section is the last bit all right so there you have it um the yarns that i used are um mostly chillinets yarns um and uh one malabrigo all right i think i told you last time so and i worked it with us six which i don't remember i think it's Ooh, it might be uh, three and a half millimeters. I'll check. US six. I did um, everything on US six except the this section, the slip stitch section, because I'm all sweaty. Because when I did my speckled and pop shawl, also by Stephen West. Um, I remember that the the slip stitch section was kind of um, tighter in relationship to the rest, so I went up one needle size to US seven to do this so that it would be not as tight, and and I think it worked okay. And then I went back to US six for the rest. So, yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. I love wearing this shawl, it's a little warm right now, as you can see I'm sweating, because it's already March and spring's here, I suppose, but I like the colors, I like the color combinations, and um, it was fun, it was fun to wear, I was very happy to wear it at uh, Vogue Knitting Live when I was there. The one day that was cold, the other day was also warm. But yeah. So this is my my one and only FO for this episode. And uh, let's see. The next thing I'm working on, I'm working on a uh, pair of socks. I'm working on a pair of socks and I've um, finished one half is this um, the pattern is called business casual I don't remember the the designer's name but um, she's uh, the owner of Tannis Fiber Arts. Her name is Tannis, but I don't remember her last name. That's really bad. I should have checked. Um, but anyway, these, uh, I think on the first episode I was working on these and they were too tight. So I undid, I ripped the whole thing back and I started again. And I changed the needle size and I went up uh, the cast on number. I increased the number of cast on stitches that I used. So let's see. I The pattern calls for 72 stitches and I went up to 80. And I did the, the ribbing for 20 rows on a um, size 0 .00 um, needle, I think, no, um, 0 .0, sorry, uh, a needle, and then I switched to a US-1 for the rest of the body, and the body, the sock, right? And I am using uh, knit picks for the main color uh, in their straw finger and weight. And the colorway, I think it's called Poppy Field, um, if I'm not mistaken. 
and uh, for the contrasting colors I'm still using the same thing that I used last time which is a uh, Lion Brand Sock Ease um, I think the color is marshmallow right? it's kind of like a creamy creamy white and um, I'm using the usual heel flap and gusset um, structure because my bridge is rather high so um, that's what I have to use I haven't I I'm toying with the idea of doing um, kind of like a like an afterthought teal or something but that that just seems so tiny that I'm not I'm, I need to look at tutorials and see if there's a way I can fix that um, we'll see because um, this is my least favorite part of uh, building socks I um, it just seems dull and I hate picking up stitches because I feel like um, I'm gonna do something wrong and then you know when when it comes to this little corner there's always like kind of a big hole and you know I'm trying I'm toying with like different constructions clearly I made a mistake here <laughs> uh, this is uh, the um, slipped slipped stitch heel and at the end I do like a garter stitch row here a couple actually of um, rows and um, not rows but columns of garter stitch to make it easier to pick up the stitches um, so that when I pick up the stitches it doesn't look so gapy right. I, I think I'm doing an okay job I'm kind of learning the process in that right and uh, that's the first sock I um, learned something with these socks which is that when you do I guess when you do any kind of cabling you basically lose a stitch count and this one has I guess like eight um, cables so sorry for the noise so um, in a sense I guess I, lo I lost eight stitches and that's why the first the first attempt when I tried 72 stitches I was actually basically working on a 64 stitch sock so but anyway so that's the first half and I am working on the second part of the sock <laughs> um, I've done the cuff again 20 rows um, the leg the heel and I've picked up the stitches and I've started I've started working down the the gusset and um, I'm not sure you can see but I did the same thing actually I think I think this this sock I'm a little bit more successful on the picking up the stitches so hopefully that means I'm learning yay right um, and I am working with um, Chagu magic loop and these are these are the same needles that I was working on for my um, dotted rays shawl from 
last episode. So that's why they're so long, because I wanted a really long cable, but it's okay. I was going to, um, I was going to try to do two at a time socks because of um, Connie from uh, Chile Knit suggested that I do that and she gave me some pointers. But because of the the nature of these the nature of these socks um, there is a point where the um, the cables cross or, or these lines cross to make like that kind of like argyle shape right so um, like here <laughs> you can see my laddering but it's okay um, here so if I was doing two at a time I would have two socks and then when I need to bring the the front half and the back half of the sock together to cross them over I would have a whole another sock in between and I so I decided um, maybe I'll try that with vanilla socks next right <laughs> so why complicate my life um, so yeah so that's my next work in progress and lastly the last thing that I'm working diligently lately is my uh, sweater my uh, Grettier sweater by Jared Flood uh, from Brooklyn Tweed I made the same sweater back in uh, last summer i made it for as a, as a birthday gift for for my roommate his birthday is in september and i really 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 like the design so i decided that i wanted to make a sweater for myself and i thought oh i'll make it for uh rhinebeck rhinebeck came and went and i didn't and then i thought oh i'll make it uh for christmas time uh for christmas dinner or whatever uh christmas came and went and nothing happened and um finally i decided i need to do it now that spring is here and i'm not gonna need it but hey so um i think i showed you the yarns last time they're let lopey um, Icelandic yarns and I swatched and this is this is the the swatch for the body of the sweater this is the color that the body of the sweater is going to be and it's kind of like my t-shirt <laughs> uh, <laughs> so clearly I don't like blue <laughs> so um, this is the swatch um, and then I did the swatch for the color work. And this is the color work section. The pattern calls for, um, like, honestly, for like a million and one needles. But um, mainly it calls for a um, US 7 for the body and a US 8 for the color work and after I swatched um, I was getting it calls for 20 stitches per um, 4 inches I believe and I was getting 18 so I went um, down to um, US 6 for this and I swatched again and it's sorry about the noise it sucks to <laughs> it sucks to live in the city but I love it um, anyway um, I went down to US 6 and um, I still didn't get gauge, but it was 19 instead of 18, so I thought, mm, fine, I'll just uh, do US 6 and um, measure my chest and find whatever, um, 
whatever number of stitches is the closest for my chest measurement which was um, my chest was uh, 48 and so that's what I did and I started knitting it and I've done um, I've done the the sleeves so far this is um, sleeve number one and I have all these <laughs> progress keepers to count um, to count rows because I hate counting you know starting over again so I just put a progress keeper every uh, so often in this case I was using them I think every 20 every 20 rows so this is like 120 rows long right and I didn't want to keep counting and uh, that's sleeve number one and this is sleeve number two right and uh, so I have two sleeves Yay. two sleeves down um, I added this little detail with different color on the on the cuffs because I thought why not <laughs> uh, the pattern doesn't call for it um, you do a uh, tubular cast on so this is actually just like provisional yarn it's not going to that's not going to be part of the part of the uh, sweater um, you do a provisional cast on and then you start working the tubular cast on on top of that and then at the end after after I block the sweater and everything, I'm going to pull out the provisional waist yarn um, so that the the ribbing doesn't get too stretched out right in the blocking process. And uh, so yeah, it's uh, actually a lot of fun. I love I love the way the tubular cast on lugs because it just seems like like there is no beginning and no end it just kind of like falls over and it keeps going so it's kind of fun and, uh, so those are the those are the two sleeves um, <laughs> I'm such a nerd and uh, a knitting nerd I guess the other day I was this is not related to this letter but the other day I was watching the uh, podcast with uh, uh, Hoji, Hoji Locatelli, the designer, and um, Veronica, who is my friend, and um, I was watching their podcast, and Hoji was knitting um, some um, socks, and she had them on a cable, and the cable was just like this, the same color and same brand knitter's pride, and I was like, oh my god, I have the same cable as Hoji Locatelli. <laughs> <laughs> so sad so sad but anyway it made it made my moment and uh, so I thought I would share that with you guys <laughs> and then this is um, back to the sweater this is um, what I have so far of um, the body right. a little bit of blood stitches this is what I have so far of um, the body. It's um, I'm working on 240 stitches, and I am going to knit up um, about 17 inches before I join the sleeves. Right, and I have so far I think I have like 12 or or 13 inches. Of nothing but knit, which is fine. Um, it has there's a couple of sections where you add uh, some short rows 
to elongate the back of this sweater a little bit so the so the back of the sweater is longer than the front which is fine i like that and then you do that like kind of towards the middle of the the middle of the torso then um after you join the the sleeves and then i think you do it again like for the back of the neck i think so so yeah that's that's what i have so far um like i said i'm using um let lopi it's Icelandic yarn and um I don't think they have color names, so I'm just going to show you the number, because that's whoa. that's the number, right? The color number is uh, 10403-9472. Um, they're very exclusive uh, colorway number. And uh, these are the other, these are the other colors that I'm using for the color work for the yoke, right? And um, you saw them in the in uh, the swatch. This this is the color that I'm using as a border on the cuffs for my sleeves and the bottom ribbing of my sweater. And this one is. Um, 1402-9580 and this one is just gonna go on the color work and this one is 1707-9430 and this one is 0054-9470 so yeah so those are the let lobies that I'm using. Um, the wool is a little bit scratchy, like when when it's rustic, I suppose it's a rustic yarn. So when when you're working on it, at first I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like my friend. Sefe says, uh, oh my god, I am working with steel wool and <laughs> my Brillo pad. I can wash my dishes. But no, um, actually, after after I blocked it, um, it became really soft. And I mean, it's still it's still rustic kind of wool. So it's, I guess if you're really, really sensitive, it, that might be a little uncomfortable to you but after blocking it for me it's I you know it's not it's fine I, it doesn't it doesn't bother me which I guess it, I put it to my neck because I think that's the most sensitive part of you know what you're gonna wear and um, it's nice and soft so I like it and um, I was going to, in case you'll be curious about the stitch markers, the, the other stitch markers that uh, the progress creepers that I'm, progress, progress keepers, geez, that I'm using, um, I made, I just went to Michael's and bought some materials and made them. But these ones I got from, um, the internet from Etsy and uh, I think I think it's called share my passion on Etsy and um, these are like at least this one is dandelions which I love dandelions like cut in some kind of like resin um, solution or something to and made into a a stitch marker and I love it it's really cool so I thought I thought I would share that with you I don't know if you can see the the dandelion seeds in there but they're fun um, and yeah so that's all the knitting I've been doing and um, um, so yeah 
next thing I'm going to share with you is a little bit of the um, my Vogue Knitting Live experience, which was the first time I went to Vogue Knitting Live, and it was a lot of fun. I went to, um, uh, I took a class with Vera Velamaki, and I went to a lecture by uh, Stephen West. And those were really, 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 really fun experiences. Um, I I wanted to get Stephen's um, latest book on his um, West Nets Best Nets, which I did. Yay! And I had already gotten the first. the first um, volume, volume number one, and I wanted to get the newest one, and I wanted to make sure that he would sign it for me, which he did, yay! So I have two personalized autographs by Stephen West. <laughs> I feel so accomplished. <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, so uh, he was there with his store from Amsterdam, uh, Penelope, Stephen and Penelope, I think it's called, it's, um, and uh, that was very nice, they had a lot of stuff, and so I had a really good time, he was very nice, very kind, every time I've actually met him, he's been very, very sweet, so um, I was glad that he was still nice and kind and um, so I'm going to um, from here I'm going to knit um, well I want to knit many things but I'm going to, the next thing that I'm going to do is going to be um, his Marled Magic sweater and uh, oops. Yeah, hope I'm, <laughs> I hope I didn't give anything anything away. <laughs> so um, that's the that's the next project that I'm going to do. I'm sure you've seen it, but yeah. So and um, so I bought some yarns for that, which I I might show you in a little bit. I I don't usually uh, I don't usually like the oh look what I bought and you didn't kind of thing um, you know I I, I, don't, I don't want to come across as showing off I guess but anyway and then um, walking around I um, stumbled into one of these um, stalls that they were um they had all sorts of like um stuffed um oh, what do you call them amigurumis i think they're called and um and um i was like oh those look so nice and i went in the stall and i was Know, looking at them and I was like oh these are really really nice and then I realized who they were right and that's Edwards uh, menagerie and um, actually a few months ago I had seen in um, the dog start may cast it's a uh, podcast with this couple um, who are really fun, Jake and Ray. And Jake is a an indie dyer, and he does cool like indie dye yarns. And Ray is a maker, and she does a lot of different things. And she showed this book, uh, and I thought. Um, oh, that's really cool. So I went and put it on my wish list for Christmas and then I was gonna get it and it was sold out during Christmas. So it was a really nice surprise 
to go there and see them and and they had it and then I realized that not, not only was this random store selling them that it was not some random store it was actually the designer herself that was selling these books so I got it autographed by the designer I was so so elated I was so happy <laughs> it was like I was like a little kid so silly but you know I was and uh, I, I dragged my roommate with me to the first the first night of Vogue Knitting Live and um, I promised that I would I would make him one of these and uh, I, he wants the the monkey I'm trying to find it to show you no. here Siegfried the monkey right so I promised I, I would make him this so in the future <laughs> I'm sure he wants it soon um, I'll make him that and then um, so just with that I was like yay I'm happy I got I got the book that I wanted and then I stumbled into this other book and I got an autograph by the author so I was like happy right the rest was just icing on the cake um, so then I went to um, I went to Stephen West's lecture which was a lot of fun he talked about his inspiration and uh, what what um, uh, and what his process is and how um, um, he comes up with things or he does one thing and then turns into another it was a, it was fun and it was actually um, there's a lot of things to learn from that it was very liberating in the sense that um, I guess he he's very inviting of not following the rules as long as you know what rules you are not following so I, and I think that that's a very liberating thing to know that this is the way things are supposed to do but then you can you can do them not that way and still get good results so so that was fun and then I went to a uh, class with Vera um, who is a, a designer from Finland and uh, I think she's you know, she's very well known I'm sure and um, she does a lot of collaborations with Hohi Locatelli and uh, her class was also a lot of fun I learned a lot and um, by the end by the by the end of the class I asked her if she could sign sign my program and also Steven asked if, if they could sign my program my uh, Vogue Knitting Live program so that I could have like a, a memento of my Vogue Knitting Live <laughs> experience and that's Vera and that's Steven and those are the those are the two the class and the lecture that I went to so yeah that was fun um, and I had a great time I met a lot of people a lot of people were really nice um, you know the 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 knitting community is really really very welcoming and very friendly and very generous of their time and their experience and it was it was really great i loved i loved every moment um well almost <laughs> and um i also got i went to uh the alex create stand say hello because he he was my teacher for um, for spinning he taught me some um, spinning techniques and I wanted to say hello and I got this art bot from sorry for something from him I don't think he prepared it I think um, somebody else prepared it for him but he was selling it and, and I like the colors and um, was kind of fun. I've never done spinning from an art bat, so um, we'll see. So 
sorry for the crinkling. We'll see um, what what I can make out with that. And then I went to another place and I bought some um, Targi. So for for spinning their um, Oink Pigments is a company. And uh, this is so nice and soft. Um, I think it's this is superwash Targi. So I've never worked with Targi before either. I mean, um, I think I mean I think I've knitted with Targi, but I've never spun um, Targi top. So um, we'll see what this turns into. And um, I got um, some yarns that I was looking for for um, the sweater that I'm going to make the Marled Magic sweater and I went to um, the booth by the uh, unit and I will say I know I'm gonna sound really shady but I <laughs> I was really surprised of uh, how friendly and helpful and uh, really enjoyable they were. I mean, I thought, you know, she's so popular that she, whatever, they're, you know, they're going to be like, Ew, who, you know, who are you kind of thing. And they were not. They were so friendly. Everyone who was working there was super friendly. And then, um, you know, there were like... Uh, Iris uh, Yarn Habits, who's an indie dyer, she was there and she was so sweet. And then um, this a designer that um, made something, um, something. She designed a shawl for them in the summer. Um, I don't remember her name, but she was also very sweet. And then Julie Knits in Paris was there which was a huge surprise because I wasn't expecting someone from Paris to be new I don't know it, it, it was and she was so friendly and they took pictures with me and they were helpful and it was an amazing amazing experience and I was like wow I you know I love them <laughs> and um, and I got some uh, from th from them I got some uh, Ushitita yarns um, this one is Highlands and they're um, merino singles it's really really pretty it's so soft so pretty and um, this one is T Ooh, ooh. T browsers? I don't know. I can't understand what that says. Let's see. Can anyone? I don't know. It's blown out. But it's really nice. Kind of like browns and light browns and a little bit of like greens. And it's kind of nice. And this one is midnight and I don't know what I'm gonna do with these I don't know what I'm gonna do with these 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 are not for the moral magic um, sweater these were just because they were pretty and I wanted them and I got them and I'm terrible and uh, yep yeah, so and then I got from them also some um, hedgehog fibers and um, I got some mohair and I think the colorway is called kimono I'm not sure and uh, this is another this is uh, merino something I don't remember I'll look it up and post it here or look at the tag because I've already caked them because I was sure I was going to start the sweater right away so. 
and um, so yeah. So once once I start the sweater, I'll show you more of what I'm using with them, and uh, and I also got uh, from different booths um, dragonfly fibers. I got this for the cuffs of this sweater. Right, the colorway is winter woods. Winter woods. And um Superwash Merino DK. You need some um DK for the for the cuffs and the sleeves of the sweater, yes. And um finally I got some uh, knit picks. They were they had a booth and they were selling some uh, Felici. So I got some Felici for like self striping socks. And and I guess these is these are the ones that I'm going to try with um, two at a time. Their Felici, um, and uh, it was on sale. It was pretty cheap, actually. Um, I don't know what the colorways are. I'll see if I can figure them out and, and tell you either here on the oh, Stone Harbor. That's the name of that one, and um, Witch's Brew. The name of that one. And I got, I got um, four bowls. Of one and two bowls of the other, and uh, we'll see what that makes. And um, yeah, so I think I think that's all I'm showing you for today, which I think is plenty <laughs> more. And uh, finally, um, um, I'll tell you a little bit about. Phoebe, who's right now is sleeping, so I'm not gonna wake her up again. But you saw her already. Uh, we we adopted Phoebe um, the same weekend as Vogue Knitting Live, actually, and uh, uh, she's very sweet. <laughs> and uh, so um, Rocky. Who's, I was, uh, I don't know if you remember a couple of episodes ago, I was knitting a little blanket for Rocky that I was going to give to my roommate. Rocky unfortunately passed away at the beginning of December. I didn't mention anything in any of the previous podcasts because I thought it would be like, eh, I don't know. But anyway, Rocky passed away and um, we were very sad. And I was, I was very, very sad that I did not finish I did not finish that blanket before before he died and so that's why I, would, I really wanted to get it done to give it to my roommate for Christmas because Rocky was Rocky was his pet and so um, in January uh, we went to um, an adoption event my roommate wanted to adopt a new a new dog and um, so he filled out all the all the applications and whatever and he did all the research and we went to this adoption event where they had um this litter of uh puppies that had come from um some shelter in georgia or something and he had seen some pictures and they said that they were like uh, a boxer mix so i was like well you know we've Rocky was a boxer, so we kind of know what boxers are like or whatever. Um, we went and we saw s some of the pictures, <laughs> and funny enough, uh, I pointed the picture of Phoebe to him before we went there, and he said, um, absolutely not, because in the picture, I'll, maybe I'll try to put a picture here if I can find it, in the picture, uh, her one eye looks smaller than the other, so he's like, that, that dog probably has an eye infection, she's probably not healthy, uh, definitely not, we, we, we're gonna look at every other dog but her, 
definitely not her. So I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I'm whatever you say, you you're the one who wants to um adopt. And we got to uh, this place where they had there were a lot of people actually who were going to this adoption event who had uh, You know filled out their applications and whatever and they were ready to adopt and um, So we we went there and we were we got there thinking we're just gonna meet the puppies No, no obligation or whatever and um we went to where the um the kennels were and you know some people were like already uh interacting with the dogs and i guess somebody opened the the gate to her kennel because she was she was with her uh litter mates and you know i guess everybody else was paying attention to to the other puppies and I was just kind of just like looking around and not really paying attention to anything and all of a sudden I noticed this dog was at my feet with her legs up on top of me asking to jump and be hugged so <laughs> I picked her up and it was her the one dog that my roommate said not coming with us is the one that basically chose me and then you know like <laughs> I picked her up and I was carrying her and whatever and my roommate was looking at all the others and then he came and looked at her and he yeah that's the one that we took home and now we have a um now we have a Phoebe. <laughs> uh, she's still snoring on my bed. Um, but I don't think... I don't think she's a boxer mix at all. I think she's... I think she's a pit bull mix of some sort. And I think, you know, I think that... Uh, like, rescue organizations are afraid to use the, the term pit bull because I guess people don't want to adopt them or um, people are afraid of them. I think they're illegal in several states or, you know, I think even countries. I think, like, the UK has a ban on pit bulls. And so, um, yeah, so uh, we, <laughs> we, we are doing a DNA test on her. So maybe next episode I'll tell you what the DNA people said she is. But yeah, so we have we have a new puppy in the house, and she's she's eating into my knitting time because she's you know she's little she's three and a half months old she's almost four, and she she needs a lot of attention. I've been you know trying to house train her and all that, and oh, house training a puppy in the city is a it's a little challenging but I think I think I think we we are almost there she's had she's had a couple of accidents in the house but I think I think she's learning and she's very smart she's eager to to learn so yeah so that's uh, Phoebe's story she has actually um, she has an Instagram account if you if you want to follow her, I'll put the details in the bottom. Uh, her name is uh, Phoebe. I snuck in Pearl, Phoebe Pearl Junior Junior, because uh, she's named after Phoebe Buffay uh, from Friends, who is a character that I love and that my roommate loves. And when she has, um, she has her brother's triplets. <laughs> Uh, one of them is called Frank Jr. Jr. And so that's why she's called Phoebe Jr. Jr. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, um, that's it. That's it for today. Thanks for uh, coming and uh, visiting. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed. And uh, I appreciate the comments. And I try to respond to all the comments that people leave so because I feel that if you take the time to leave a comment I should take the time to respond and I really appreciate them 
the 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 nice messages that I get there or the messages that I get on Instagram or on Ravelry and um, I really appreciate it so um, thank you I hope you have a good day and happy knitting see you next time bye